go. I'm just 
understanding your fear today. All right? I mean, it ain't going to be a whole lot of people in Holland. I want people to get delivered. Is that all right? Amen. I want people to understand the process that helped me. Now, this process didn't take overnight. No, I had to practice it. It got me off drugs. It got me off alcohol. It got me off fornication. It got me off lying and stealing. Did it happen overnight? No, don't let me lie to you. But as I began to practice it, put shit in motion. Did you, when you a good ball player, did you learn how to shoot the hoop overnight? Did you learn how to run track overnight? Did you learn how to play football overnight? Did you learn how to get high overnight? It's all a practice. So anything learned can be unlearned. Hello. Anything learned can be unlearned. So what we're going to learn how to do is we're going to learn how to give it a T-E-R. We're going to learn to trace, erase, replace what has ever gone on in your life. But I can't even trace it unless you're willing to be honest about it to yourself and to God. I can't erase it until it comes up from the surface. Amen? Because people can get rid of the surface part a lot of times, but they never go to the root. There's a reason why we got the tracing. When I first went into drug counseling, they took me back to the first time I got high, which was around 12. But when I finally got to a counselor who realized there's a reason why I got high at 12, he took me all the way back to the age of two. He found the root. Was I getting high at two? No. But he discovered the root at the age of two that transpired all the way up to the age of 12 that made me act out. Got it? So he had to trace it, erase it, and now he replaced it. Now how did he replace it? With an SRT. He replaced their self-destructing thought with an SRT, which is self-destructing thought. As soon as something goes wrong, I want to go to your house. I couldn't deal with real life. I couldn't deal with real anger. I couldn't deal with real failure. I couldn't deal with real life circumstances or relationships. Mm -hmm. So the way I dealt with it was to numb it. Yeah. It was either going to be numbed by another woman, it was going to be numbed by a drug, it was going to be numbed by some activity that I thought was helping me. In actuality, it was destroying me. So, but the main thing that happened was the moment I got the thought, the self-destructive thought, which is triggered by what? The activating event that triggered what? My emotions. That said, okay, I'm going to go do this what? Behavior. Next thing I know, I was doing it. Because I had nothing to what? Replace it with. And what could replace it? Because the thought is only a second. So, when I began to learn the word of God, no matter what it was, if I learned one scripture, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be that name. Even most people ain't born again. Even people in other religions know this one, right? John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Find something to replace that negative thought. And I guarantee you, it'll start working. All right? So tonight, we're going to learn how to trace, replace, I mean, trace, erase, replace that self-destructive thought with a scripture replacement thought. All right? Y'all ready? So we're going to be studying understanding fear. Okay, go to map Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And we're going to try to leave this up on the board every week, unless you know some other teachers come here when they miss it. But the only thing I'll probably be changing is this part up here, whatever we're studying. We're looking at Mark chapter 4, verse 40. Mark 4, verse 40. I mean, I can go into a lot of detail, but I just want this one verse because it's dealing with it. It's a lot of meat in this. Um, but I just want to deal with verse 40. Where Jesus said these things. Verse 40 said this. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Why are you so fearful that you have no faith? Amen? Let's go to Revelation 21. I could really tear that Mark chapter 4 up for you. But we need to move on. Amen. Amen. But if the Holy Ghost says stop right there, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, uh, Revelation 21. And watch this. This one blew me away. This one here blew me away. 21 verse 8. Ready? Revelation 21 verse 8. And watch the order of this. This blew me away. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers. Now that word sorcerer there, the Greek word pharmaceutica, that means drug dealers or drug usage. Hello. 
pharmaceutica. That's what they call drug dealers and drug users in the Bible, sorcerers, all right? And idolaters, and watch this, all lie. It didn't say a little white lie, it didn't say a half a lie, it said all lie. And all means all, okay? All lie shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the what? Second death. It's appointed in the man to die once. But when you're in these conditions, you get to die a second time. But what's the first one he made? Go back to the top of the verse. What does it say? But the fearful. That means even if you're fearful, you're going to go to hell. Woo, look how quiet it is in here. But the fearful. But we're going to get rid of fear today, huh? Y'all don't fear no jungle on that street. But I'm going to show you who you need to fear. But he said, but the fearful shall have their place in a second death. That scared me. That's the kind of fear God wants you to have. That fear of him. Y'all fear nothing else, but you don't fear God. Amen. Woo. Amen. Go to Isaiah, chapter 35. Then we'll get into the lesson in the book in more detail. What you can't see, brother? Oh, my what you looking at? I'm looking at all the all the reactions over here. Got it? There you go. All right. Isaiah chapter 35. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 35. Starting at just read verse 4. 35 and 4. It says, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with what? Vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and, what? He will Save. come and, somebody say it, folks. Save. save you. Look at that smile on your face. Just read that. He will come and save you. Amen? Amen. Let me read some chapters out of the book now, so y'all bear with me. And listen up. <clears throat> About fear and understanding fear. The emotion that we call fear is the first recorded negative emotion that man experienced according to the Bible story of man's beginning found in the book of Genesis. It states that Adam, history's first man, when confronted by God as where he was, replied, I was afraid and hid myself. That's in Genesis 3 verse 10. Researchers have perhaps studied fear more than any other emotion and have found it to be, if not the strongest, and one of the strongest emotions that humans can experience. In a number of cultures, fear induced by a second party or a reported evil spirit leads to physiological induced death or permanent physical or psychological impairment. Have you ever seen somebody who just gets scared? Well, we're hearing for that. I want to jump in here. Go. All right. Hey, this is a condition known as SUMS. Y'all never heard of this? SUNS. It's called S-U-N-D-S. It stands for Sudden Unexpected Noct Nocturnal Death Syndrome. Sudden Unexpected Nocturnal Death Syndrome. It's documented by medical science as being explained for death during sleep in which the person appears to have died of fright. Woo! Other cases of some person dying of fright or a related emotion who experienced death while conscious includes those dying because of believing in voodoo, mm. Mm. <laughs> or those who reported death was caused by a broken heart. Do you know you can die of a broken heart? Let me pause right here. Do y'all know Jesus died of a broken heart? We always talk about the crucifixion. Thank you, Lord. We always talk about the crucifixion that he died on the cross. Do y'all remember that the scripture said not a bone was broken in his body? But when the ground shook, boom, and the earthquake came, boom, they broke the legs of the other two. But when they got to Jesus, they said he's already dead. Then the soldier said, well, pierce him. And when he stuck the pierce in his heart, mm, 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 what came out of him? Blood and water. And when blood and water comes out of your heart, it's an indication you died of a broken heart. Hello. Woo. Man, that one hit me. Just put a pause. And if you ever saw the passion of the crowd,
crash and that soldier, when that blood hit him, he just fell in the ground. So Jesus died in a broken heart. Amen? Woo, that one got me. By common definition, fear is a feeling of anxiety and agitation caused by the presence and nearness of danger, evil, pain, apprehension. Those fearful feelings need to be related to reality in order to exist. Sometimes we just come up with things that scare us. Fear can be induced by one's own imagination, a threat, or apprehension. As a man thinketh, so is he. That's in Proverbs 23, 7. The range of this emotion goes from feelings of being frightened or scared to being in a state of fright or scared stiff. Included among the fear-related emotions are all paranoia and all phobias. In fact, science believes that nearly all normal human beings are pre-diagnosed uh, pre to fear. Snakes and heights. Who's scared of snakes now? Who don't like heights? Uh-huh. This belief has been illustrated by using babies who were too young to be influenced by adult fear and who, when exposed to these heights and snakes, show no fear. Woo! So it sounds like it's being taught to you. Woo! Even when there was no real danger, these babies feared no fear. Two other unusual, two other universal fears among adults are the fear of sickness, disease, and death. Who fears death? Who fears death? Who fears death? I used to fear death. Now I got false skin. Go to Second Timothy chapter one, people. All this way, that's why I knew the Holy Ghost was going to start moving. Go to Second Timothy chapter one. Then we get back to the book. When God tells me to go somewhere, I go. Second Timothy chapter one. If you're born again, you, you have no reason to feel uh, fear in death. Watch this, and I'm going to show you why. When I finally read this scripture and got what it really meant to me, from studying the original Greek language concerning this scripture, it blew my mind. Amen? Verse 10, chapter 1, verse 10. And what does it say? But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the what? Gospel. What does it say? He abolished death. So I looked up the word abolish in the Greek meaning of it, and guess what it meant? Utterly made useless. He made death utterly useless. Now watch, let's read it again and put the interpretation. Watch this. And it said, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has utterly made useless death. Well, y'all ain't getting this. Because when you're in him, there's no because he's giving you Zoe life. What is Zoe life? Greek word for it, eternal life. Amen. You're fearing this bios condition when Jesus is giving you a Zoe condition. When I got that, nothing was for me. I'm living, and I'm going to keep on living. Amen. Well, that was a sidetrack. Bless me. <laughs> All right, let's finish reading. Fear as a weapon of destruction. Fear, as with other negative emotions, is used by the devil to induce evil thoughts, evil feelings, and evil behaviors. Fear is used to divide and destroy families, communities, churches, races, and nations. Fear is also self-destructive. It not only can cause great damage to the body, but it also weakens the mind, and cause great damage to the body, also weakens the mind and character. It is responsible for lost ambition and wasted years. Mm -hmm. Fear represents the kingdom of the devil. It is the opposite of faith, the opposite of relaxation, and the opposite of trust. Let me read that again. Fear represents the kingdom of the devil. It is the opposite of faith. The opposite of relaxation and the opposite of trust. The more fear is accepted by the mind of the individual, the more it grows within him or her and controls him or her to the point of conquering his thoughts and enslaving his mind. We get ready to get to the world boy. The old boy. 
Fear then makes all his pain and suffering worse because according to the modern medical science, fear magnifies pain. Fear magnifies pain. Y'all that? Fear magnifies pain. Amen. Types of fear. Fear can be divided into two broad categories. Protective, I mean protective or survival fear. Right? The second one, self-destructive fear. In this lesson, we will be studying the second type, self-destructive fear. By our definition, self-destructive fears are those fears that control us, which we could not control. They are not fears that would uh, assist us to survive by avoiding danger, but fears that cause us to avoid things that are not dangerous, as well as things that would bring us health and happiness. Included in these fears are the following. Fear of failure. Remember we talked about your failure ain't fine? Amen. Amen. Fear of success. Right? Amen. Fear of relationships. Fear of pain. Fear of sickness and death. Fear of being lost eternally. You know how many people walk around calling themselves a Christian and still think they're going to hell? How can you call yourself a Christian and still think you're going to hell? That's, that's, that's fear. That's what the devil puts in them. <laughs> I gotta keep on doing it right. I, I can't come to you until I get it right. No, he wants you just like you are so he can help you get right. Amen. 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 <laughs> fear of God. Now I kind of rest on this one because I know what he's talking about. Okay? There are some people, but there's also called a healthy fear of God. Because the scripture tells us, you know, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, and we will see that. And that means this. Most people have been taught fear means reverencing God and all suspicious God. No, Jesus said you need to fear him because he has the power to cast you in the way. Yeah. 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 All right. Fear of other humans because they are different. Watch this one. Here it comes. All drug-induced fears, paranoia, schizophrenia. Don't tell me. I skits many a night. Wondering who's coming through the door. <laughs> Or I shot my gun and the cat jumped. Pow! Who did? Skits. Up three days and snakes are crawling on me. What's that? Who come? Who did? Put this on the floor. Induced drug fear. <laughs> you look in my eyes and talk about. Wait. Some of y'all can't 